Uh, well, my name's Rob Thompson. I My current job title is the Head of Finance Income. Um, I've been with the organisation, as I mentioned, for around 27, well, just over 27 years. I'm currently, I'm currently responsible for the team who are responsible for rent counting, um, allocating all the uh, income to customers' accounts, and also maintaining both the property and tenancy databases. I'm Parker, and I'm the Senior Business Partner in Income for the 13 Group. So my primary function is to set all our rents and service charges. I run a smallish team. There's about four um, within the team and myself responsible for everything service charge, everything rent, any other kind of charges that are coming in, sort of like um, amenity charges, personal gas. We do everything. Uh, first of all, then about 13. Um, 13 as an organisation, we, we are the largest um, housing association in the northeast of England um, and our stock is prim primarily based across Teesside and, and Yorkshire. Um, we've, we have around 35,000 properties um, and have come about as a result of a number of mergers over a number of years. We, we have um, a broad number of different tenures, um, including um shared ownership leaseholders um general needs affordable rents and the traditional secure rents that come from our historic uh, beginnings growth is is what we're looking at um and we are continuing to develop we are we are uh, we're part of the um partnership with homes england in the in the wave um initiative and are um currently um, we have a bid in for the wave two, so we're looking to continue that that partnership. Oh yeah, problems with service charges. <laughs> um, it's kind of where do you even start when you when you, when I ask this question, it's like oh my god. So we have stock of thirty five thousand, um, and we have about ten thousand residents that actually pay us a service charge, and that kind of covers about. A thousand different blocks or schemes as they could be called so if you think for each of those blocks or schemes we initially had a service charge of some a service charge schedule of some type set up in excel for each of those so a spreadsheet for every type of scheme so you're looking at at least a thousand spreadsheets every year to be manually updated and when you consider the fact that Within a scheme or a block, you don't necessarily have everyone paying the same because so there could be a leasehold within that block, for example, or people with communal access, people without. You could have kind of a variation of a service of five service charge schedules for one scheme. So you could have an Excel document, but with five different sheets. And then, of course, you've got the, the whole issue of updating that annually. So we'd have to update those spreadsheets manually every single year for rent increase. And then, of course, because the majority of our service charge payers are variable, we then also have around a thousand service charge statements to do kind of about every September, which, again, are all done completely manual. Um, when you think about the fact we've only got a team of three coordinators and, and one assistant doing doing those sheets, the time taken was just absolutely immense. Um, it, it could take weeks, months just to, just to do the data input, just to even get the figures into the spreadsheets. Um, the room for error was huge because obviously a lot of the data was formulated. Yeah, with the time taken to check those just wasn't there. So numerous times you'd miss that a, a formula being either hard copied or just changed even. So the potential for passing on incorrect charges was, was quite huge, really. Um, so in, an, in addition to our schedules and our statements, we also have spreadsheets for every single scheme to show how much we have we've collected for funds. So that would be the funds for replacement of future fixed assets in the future. So we charge £200 for a dormitory replacement in the year. We then need to update that onto a spreadsheet for said block or said scheme to say, look, we've collected this money. And then at the end of the year, that gets moved to a balance sheet. So 
not only would we have the thousand fund value spreadsheets to update, but then there's a further master spreadsheet that all of that data would go on to, to be able to do the, the monetary movement, if you like. Um, that process alone could, could take three to four weeks, the three coordinates. So you're looking at nine to 12 weeks, purely just data input, um, which I think everyone can kind of agree. That's just lost time. You're not, you're not getting back. We've had quite a few, well, not not loads, but quite a lot of issues where somebody has maybe challenged a service charge um, because if it's gone out in the post, for example, and then they've actually got the calculator and done some sums, they might come back to us and say, you're charging me five pence for this and it should be four pence. And you, and you would literally get people ch challenging you to the to the penny. Um, or then it might come at, it might be some of the way I'm looking at year end, for example, at what one of the coordinators have done. And I can see that the annual charge for entry is 5,000, for example. But then when I've calculated what we're charging out, because the formula's slipped slightly, we're actually only charging out 4,000 pounds of that. So, yeah, a few instances where, where that type of issue occurred. Or the other way around where we've overcharged. And then, of course, you've got the whole issue of, redoing it, issuing refunds, writing to people, housing benefit impact from from that when it comes to the refunds, universal credit impact of changing the service charge mid-year. Yeah. So quite colossal really when, when you look at the root the, the potential room for error. It's actually quite scary. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a, a still a fair number of errors that have, have never come to light because not every person from every scheme would double check or not every schedule comes by me for, for whatever reason. So there, there could be any number still out there uncovered. I think it, it really highlights, John, the fact that um, manual processes are something that we're all aware are susceptible to human error and mistakes. Um, and sometimes it's possible the person operating or using them spreadsheets doesn't even realise they've made them errors or mistakes. You save over the top when you've finished what you're doing and the error is there hard set in the, in, in the, in the spreadsheet. So there was a real need um, for us as an organisation to kind of start to look to bring ourselves in to the new world of automating things where possible building capacity for the teams to be able to spend more time identifying errors, miscodings, et cetera, et cetera, so that we were more transparent when challenged and able to show back up to customers to be able to say, this is what that charge was made up of. This is where it comes from. Does that answer your query? Uh, and being able to evidence that with documents that transparency that this is your cost this is why it's this much and here's the backup to say um what we're spending and also to enable us to be able to challenge teams who are delivering them services to ensure that they're getting value for money yeah i think what with what we've found in traditional housing uh, management systems do tend to have a module that is deemed as a service charge module Historically, that was a very basic um, recording system to be able to highlight what you were charging separately and didn't give the detail, the breakdown by different cost centers to the levels, not just to scheme levels, but to unit levels and everything else that we were looking for. Most systems tended to be an add-on to your, your general housing management system. And when you did look across, and um, which we did, we had a look right across various providers across the sector, it tended to be you needed their system to get any benefit from their service charge module. What we were looking for in a service charge system that was something that would sit on top of whatever we had and integrate into that system, even if we decided down the line to move from that operating system and bring something else in, we would still have that module's ability to sit on top of that system and work for us. I attended a finance conference, national finance conference in um, Liverpool, I believe it was, and um, one of the one of the sessions that was on there 
was um, Trace Solutions alongside um, Peabody, I believe it was at the time, Peabody and Family Mosaic, who were using um, the Blue Box product to produce what I saw at the time as being quite innovative and impressive booklets that they were providing all the information for their um, customers, particularly their homeowners and leaseholders, to give them all the detail of the service charge breakdowns. Um, and that um, really kind of inspired me to start asking questions, not about um, the booklet itself, because it was there for all to see, but how they had managed to get the detail and the level of breakdown that they were and the, inf of the information they were providing in the booklet um, in their systems in the first place and what system were they using for that. And that was when um, I was sort of directed towards, well, this is it's a, the product's called Blue Box and it's Trace Solutions. Um, so that sort of got the initial interest going um, and Emma and myself consequently um, got in touch with a couple of organisations who were using the Blue Box product and we went and had a little look um, at that product, spoke to the users and the people who were involved in using the systems and kind of thought this looks like something that would be really interesting to us. Um, we kind of gauged and got a lot of information about the different functionality and we weren't just looking for a service charge system that was that's it, it does service charges and nothing else. We were looking for a system that would as a, allow us to grow and evolve the system over time, depending on the direction and the shift the business wanted to move in. Um, because we're also responsible for rent setting, we were really keen to have a module or a system that would allow us to look at setting rents as well as service charges. Blue Box offers that level of functionality, and that was something that we were very interested in as well. And consequently, we, when we went back to our own world and started pulling a specification together in terms of what we were looking for from a product um, to be able to go out in an open tender to the market um, to see what was out there, because we didn't want to just think, well, actually, we've seen this Blue Box yet. Yeah, it looks pretty good, and it ticks a lot of our boxes. But we want to kind of see what else is out there that could potentially compete with that that we haven't already come across in our previous sort of research and, and when we've been looking into bringing a new system in. So that's kind of very much um, how we were introduced to Blue Box um, in the first place. So currently we would say we are the system is live. So our Blue Box system is live. We have all of our Every unit, every property, every scheme is, is in there now and set up in the way we would want it to be set up. So we chose to set it up um, kind of a three level approach. We have estate, property, unit. So they are all in the scheme in the blue box system as stands. Um, all our tenancy data, lease data, everything is now kind of being updated daily um, by an interface. So that's just being done automatically with, with no real input from, from myself or the team needed. And that's kind of keeping everything very up to date. So if we had a demolition or new schemes come on the system, they're seamlessly now just, just getting pulled across and, and kind of the system's doing what it needs to do and setting it all up. Um, in addition to that, we set up all of our creditor records. So, for example, um, we know who would be paid for emergency lighting, joint for systems and, and so on. We have all of our expense categories set up and expense types. Um, and then that has that's allowed us to start actually getting right down to the nitty gritty of setting up the service charge data to be applied to the schemes. Um, I would say currently we're about 80% setting up that data. So 80% of our schemes now have service charge data linked. So that means we have schedules set up against the property record. The expense types are linked to the schedules. The units um, that pay service charges are linked to the relevant schedules. And then the apportionment confirmed. We've got budget data loaded um, going back to 1920. We've got actuals loaded from 1920. And we're currently in the process of loading our 
2021 actuals to be compared against our 2021 budgets. Um, where, where we are now is we, we just have this 20% remaining, which relates to the real complex schemes. Um, and our income analyst is, is working tirelessly every day to, to get those set up. Um, they are proven trickier than we thought, but the thing that keeps us going and keeps us happy is that we know once the setup's done, they're done. And life is so much easier once they're done, but we are still in the process of getting that last 20% in. But once that 20% is in, we're, we're done. In, in terms of service charges, we're, we're going to be hitting the ground running. We're good to go. Um, we've been using the system already with regards to the 80% that is in there to be able to produce some reports that have been useful. Um, we've been able to pull out the 21-22, so current year service charges payable for that 80% of units. That was that was literally once we'd got the budget in, it was literally the press of press of a button, press of a button, and when it, it kind of spilled out a report for us that said, this is the unit and this is what their weekly service charges. This is the unit. This is what their monthly service charges, and we were then able to use that data, that report, to upload directly into our housing management system for then rent letters to be produced. So that was like pretty much mind mind blown when when we did that rent increase time. Because um, that, ordinarily that would have took my team like a good four weeks to have updated that master sheet to get the data over into our housing system. So yeah, so that that was huge. Um, in in terms of other things, it's allowing us to do. So that was a real real bonus. And then other things that we've been allowed to do because of the eighty percent that we've already got set up. Um, we've been able to kind of start pulling a few reports and looking at where we have we have a handful of units. Well, I say a handful, a good few hundred to be honest of units where uh, for whatever reason because of the lease or the tenancy agreement we can't physically charge them the service charge now the blue box system still allows us to calculate what the service charge is for that unit but we but it knows in the background we can't physically charge it out to them so we've been able to start looking at the data to say how much are we not recovering as a result of these units where the tenancy agreement or lease doesn't allow us to charge and it also allows us to then calculate what should the new tenant pay when they're moving. So if, as the current tenant moves out, we can charge the new tenant. So it's allowing us to work out what our new tenant charges need to be um, applied at turnover. Um, so that's been really good. It's also allowing us to start looking at where we have expenditure against our affordable schemes. So the affordable schemes are where um, the rent pay is all inclusive. So you don't see rent, you don't see a service charge, you just see an all inclusive rent. And previously, we've, we've never really put together the service charge data for those schemes, knowing that we can't physically apply it out. But the blue box is allowing us to, to kind of keep putting that data in. And then that will tell us by reports how much we're not physically charging out as a result um, of the affordable regime. Um, we are also, I mentioned when I said about one of the types of spreadsheets we had, which was not to keep um, a kind of a toll on the funds that we're collecting for each scheme. Um, we're able to use the blue box system to keep a track of that. So it knows how much we've charged for the fixed asset replacement, for dietary each year, for how much for um, emergency lighting. We can pull reports to say in total how much have we collected for dietary replacements. We can pull a report that says how much have we pulled, how much have we collected per scheme. Um, so that kind of replaces that nine, 12 week process at year end when we are filling in spreadsheets and updating the master sheet to do the movements to the balance sheet. So we haven't done this. We haven't actually done that yet, but we will be doing it next year. And from looking at what it can do already on that side of things, again, that's going to be kind of a half an hour job, if that, by the time the information's all in. Um, and I think, let me think what else. Oh, yeah. So when everything was on spreadsheets, we only ever within the housing within the housing management system, we would say how much a unit would pay in for a service charge per week, for example. What you couldn't say was what that service charge was made up of unless you physically went into Excel and looked at the spreadsheet. So a unit could be paying £10 a week, but £3 could be for die entry, £2 emergency lighting and, and so on and so forth. Now, it was impossible to pull together any kind of reporting to say, how much are we collecting for door entry um, repairs and maintenance? How much are we collecting for fire alarm? Um, you just 
I'd have had to go through the thousand spreadsheets and, and add it all up manually and then try and work out well who actually doesn't pay that. Um, it, it just would have been mammoth, but Blue Box will allow us to just pull that apart and it, we can we can pull you can pull data in any kind of formats you like. So you could say, give me all the joint entry across the whole the 13, give me it per scheme, give me it per unit. The, the levels of data in the report are, ju are just quite mind blowing, really. Yeah, I mean, for me, obviously, having overall responsibility for that service and being ever conscious that we are a growing organisation, um, we don't have endless resource to keep throwing more staff and more staff at each task as we bring on another couple of hundred units um, as we go with our development programme. And we're not, we're not just looking as we grow to build units, but also maybe to acquire through purchase um it's about the what the benefits of blue box and the time savings allow us to do some of the things that previously we were we didn't have the capacity to do without the need to further grow the team um and i think that's for me uh, and the organization when budgets are ever um ever tightening and we've got to be conscious of value for money um, at the end of the day, this is customers' money we're spending, and we've got to try and manage our services and our service delivery in the most co cost-effective ways. And Blue Box certainly gives us the tool and the, the technology that we need to be able to cut out a lot of these extremely large and long-winded processes to be able to do a lot more of the things we didn't have time doing, like in-depth budget monitoring, getting things right before the costs and the expenditure is actually going into the system so that when we're pressing the button and generating information, we're confident that that information is correct, rather than what we used to find towards the end of the year when we're going to be setting the rents for the new year, we'll be looking through all the stuff in the management accounts and each member of the team would be going through their areas and their costs. Oh, I found such and such. This is costed. This has been coded to the wrong uh, cost center or it's been matched to the wrong invoice. And before, so you're having to undo and lots and lots. This, all this work will be done at the front end so that when it does come to that time to push the button, we're, we've got all the information in there and we're happy with what is coming out. The opportunity to continue to develop Blue Box. One of the things in our plan for the next 12 months is to um, firstly finish off the 20% of the very complex schemes that Emma's mentioned. Um, once that's in, in terms of the Blue Box and the database and the splits and the apportionments, that is, like she's mentioned already, happy days, we're there. It's then like, what, what more do we want this product to do for us? And we're looking at the rent setting module. We pay and, and are supported with a separate rent setting module that we, we maintain and run. So potentially by bringing that into the blue box system, there, there are opportunities for savings with that system once we've parallel run for a period of time to be confident blue box is giving us what we, what we want to see. And there are also, again, particularly around with leasehold services getting more and more complex and particularly elements of um, works that we do that can be recharged back to leaseholders as long as we are following the correct Section 20 consultation processes, Blue Box, the Blue Box system does have a Section 20 module. There are so many benefits across the organization and other departments that can gain from the power of this product that we want to be sharing them benefits with a wider organization and making sure that all the processes that we have to do particularly processes that are quite drawn out cumbersome quite detailed the more we can automate in that process and be led by the system um, the better it will be for us and the more time we're likely to save and we're likely to be more efficient at delivering um, in them areas. So uh, lots of positives. I think if I was to highlight the biggest plus for me is that it's the conversations with the team that are actually using it, our analysts who 
been instrumental in working with the project team to get us where we are, um, how excited they are about what the product gives them and the overwhelming um, responses. This system is fantastic. I can't believe it. I know it's been hard to set it up um, and perhaps there are some lessons learned, which perhaps me and Emma will touch on shortly, um, that we might, knowing what we know now, we might have done things differently, which would have made our journey slightly smoother. But having worked through our implementation and had conversations with other organisations um, using the product, we're really pleased that the direction and the time and the way we set things up, we're confident that was the right way to go with the product and the work that's gone in initially with the um, data cleansing exercise we did, which was a massive exercise, and perhaps bigger than we'd anticipated. Um, but what it did do was allow us to re revisit some of the data that was sitting in our existing out management systems and the structures behind that data, scheme setups, codings, um, and realize that actually everything wasn't right in the original system, but we were able to put all that right, work with our data teams and other colleagues across the business to get that right, which consequently meant the blue box implementation then mirrored and we were able to export straight from the housing management system to do the updates in blue box, creating effectively um, a, a very neat and tidy interface overnight from one system to the other so that every change that took place in in the orchard system was mirrored and reflected in blue box and again a lot of work with other teams uh, great support from our it teams and that would be another sort of top tip if you like would be make sure you've got your it team with you and on board and this is an organizational wide project not just a departmental project because it overarches so many different service areas. From the start is, is be, clear, be very clear what your, your expectations are, what you're looking for, and understand your data before you even start on the journey. Make sure that if Blue Box is the product you have chosen, that you start to get your data structured in a way that is gonna be friendly to Blue Box, so that you two, your housing management system that you're extracting the data from will easily talk to Blue Box. I suppose another thing would be don't underestimate the complexities of service charges, particularly schemes that have multiple tenures within a block, multiple number of uh, units that are charged differently and not everybody gets the same charge. So be aware that it's important to get your project team right, allocate enough resource, don't be watching the clock in terms of your program time, allow sufficient time to reflect and review and work, use the skills at Trace and other Trace um, or Blue Box users or other organisations who are using the product to get their top tips. Don't make the same mistakes that others have made by being shy to ask. And I think that it's really important. We did a, we got an awful lot of information and tailored the way we, we went around the design of our system based on listening to the expertise at Trace, but also um, conversations with colleagues from other organizations who were already using the systems. So again, it really, um, do your homework, be clear what you want your end result to be, um, and then follow that journey. Anything from you, Emma? No, the only other, the only thing I can think of really is to kind of say, once you've got it set in your mind what you want to achieve at the end, don't bite off more than you can chew in terms of what you want to put into the system to start pulling things out. So, for example, we decided that oh, once we've got it set up, it's all part of the setup, we can just start chucking all, all our data in and we can go back a few financial years and get the information in. And we, we decided we'd start by um, putting all our 2019-20 data in, so budgets and actuals, 
Um, we didn't need it, we didn't need Blue Box to produce anything for those years, but we, we just wanted that historical information in. But in hindsight, the amount of work it took in getting that extra year in for not much benefit, really, I suppose, other than having that historical data there, it's probably been a little bit of a detriment in terms of the timings of the project. If we just kind of said, right, that year's finished, let's start 2021, we'd probably be further ahead of the game now in terms of that 20% complex. We'd maybe have the 20% complex in, I'm not sure, but yeah, I think... We, we were maybe a little bit over ambitious in what we could get done in in the project time scales. Twelve months plus of the implementation process, we were working remotely from home. Um, we weren't in the environment that we started the project in. Um, you know, I think all in all, um, things have gone very well. There has been lots of learning. We're more than happy to share that with people. Um, we have done a number of sessions with other local based organisations who are aware of what we're doing and the journey we're on, who are also um, asking about Trace and Blue Box and what the product can do. Um, we've given some demos, we've talked to people about our journey and we're in regular communications with a couple of um, two or three locally based organisations in the North East who are looking at service charge um, solutions and Trace is one of the solutions that they're looking at. So um, I think we're all in the same boat that the whole world has relied on spreadsheets for so yeah. long. Um, but as the complexities of service charges and buildings and all the other elements that go with it now, particularly around building safety and um, or the costs, it's really important to get this right. Um, it is a big deal if you get it wrong, not only from a regulatory point of view, but also from the potential to lose a significant amount of revenue that you could ordinarily be charging out and collecting back. Yeah, 